message about saying that there's not a housing crisis, there's a greed crisis. So we're going to explain that a little bit more today. I'm not going to be the one to do that. But we got to get into that because some people are a little frustrated about that phrasing. But, you know, this is it's Jimmy's. But they have a, they're, part of this, they're part of our family, too, because this is a big umbrella. But we're going to get into describing that, about what that means. So first I'm going to ask for some context to be created oh, around this situation. From Paula Laverde, Excuse me? Berkeley Rent. Pardon me, behind you. From the Berkeley Rent Station Section Board. Pardon me. Pardon me. Hello, everyone. My name is Paola Laverde, and I'm the chair of the Berkeley Rent Stabilization Board. I'm also a proud member of the Berkeley Tenants Union. You know, the rent is too high, and it's not our fault. You know, we have a system that is set up to only benefit one set of stakeholders developers, property owners, and investors. Right? Right? We have laws that say if a unit is empty, the property owner can raise the rent to as high as the market will bear. That's why we have 50 year old units, apartment units, that are going. For two and three thousand dollars, a one bedroom in, in Berkeley can go for twenty eight hundred dollars. Okay, that's crazy. But the law says that's okay. We have a law that says, or there's no regulation on new on new rents on new units. So it says, it says that we can keep them empty until we find someone who can afford to pay the exorbitant rents. That's what's happening here at the Bart Station. You know, you have. You have studio apartments going for what, twenty eight hundred dollars? You know, Ooh. because this is a new type of uh, of redlining that we have in our state, where only the rich can afford to pay these new units. So this is why we have this situation right now. And I want to tell you something that it can change. It can change, and there is current change right now. Right now, the state of California is in uh, an, a, a declaration of emergency. That means that when that law, when the governor signs a declaration of emergency, a whole lot of protections come in. Right now, there is vacancy control protection. Right now, right? There is a protection if you can't raise rents right now more than 10%. Right now. Right now, you cannot get evicted so that the landlord can raise a rent to whatever the market will bear right now. And we need, we need right now for us organizations, for the folks in Los Angeles to start writing the governor to tell him to expand this current state of emergency because we have protections that we don't have with the new law coming in, 1482. So the law right now is against the tenants and we have to make sure that our voices are heard. The system is not working and the rents are too high and it's not our fault. Thank you. to know 
know what it feels like to be homeless? Because I'm lucky enough to have a home, and many of my members do. We understand that every day we struggle, and every day we will have your back. <laughs> Housing is a human right. And we shouldn't be out here today. We should be making sure that these women and many other women and their children heading into Thanksgiving don't just get a turkey, but they get a house. <laughs> so say this with me. Housing is a human right. Housing is a human right. Good afternoon. My name is Eddie Ituarte with Oakland Tenants Union. And us tenants that live in Oakland, that work in Oakland, we'd like to thank ACE and all the other member organizations putting together this rally and putting together um, the demands and bringing again the attention of an adequate and unaffordable housing to the people of Oakland and the people of the state. Our basic message uh, today is that. Um, the reason we're having gatherings like this is because tenant organizations, progressive organizations are working together. And we've been working together in the last few years. We've had a little bit of success in Sacramento, a little bit of, of success in state law, um, but we have a lot more to go. we got to get rid of that Costa Hawkins law. Um, but little by little, we've been able to get things done, and we still have things to go. But the reason we've had little successes is because we work as coalitions. Yes. And the different uh, tenant groups in Oakland, and also pro along with our progressive uh, uh, supporters, we've, we've worked together to um, pressure the city council into making laws, to um, getting the 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 voters of Oakland to pass um, some ordinances. And that's, so those things happen, not because the politicians um, want to do it. They, it happens because we force them to do it, the tenants and our supporters. So in that spirit, we're here today. Oakland Tenants Union thanks you, uh, and um, thanks all the other groups. And uh, hopefully, let's have a really good rally and good demonstration and let our voice be heard. Hi everybody, my name is Amin Robinson. I'm representing the Poor People's Campaign, uh, the Laney chapter of the Poor People's Campaign. So today I'm here to talk about housing insecurity as it affects the Laney Community College students. Um, so my experience with housing insecurity is what people would call secondary homelessness which is when you, you can stay with people who let you like sleep on a couch or sleep in a room, who who just willing and kind enough to give you that, that space for yourself in their own home. Louder. I'm trying, okay, okay, okay. So I'm here to talk about basic needs, insecurity as it affects uh, community, community college students. So I'm here to talk about secondary homelessness, which is, I guess, People would describe it as sleeping on a friend's couch or in someone's home, what have you. And that is like just out of the kindness of their heart. So for me, my experience with it is that, or I'm going to start over. I have two main points. First is that government should pay for affordable housing for all because it's a human right. And, and my second point is that students experience housing insecurity at a more, in a more harsher way than other students do. Um, when students uh, experience housing insecurity, it takes away from them focusing on things like, what can I put in this essay to make it stand out? What can I do in this classroom to make to make myself more competitive? They can't focus on things of that sort because instead they're focusing on, what am I going to eat tonight? Where am I going to lay my head? Um, am I even going to eat this week? Where am I going to get the money from? And they're focusing on things of, the, of that nature that they can't even be a full-time student mentally because they're taken away from all these different stressing uh, like topics or, or like needs. And then 
for another like point closing point would be that one solution that I've heard of is for Laney to allow students to sleep in the parking lot. Um, and I don't really feel as though that's a, a proper solution. So one idea that we have would be for them to take advantage of that parking, Laney parking space and to build some type of uh, dormitory or affordable housing for students, which could be used. Um, I'd also like to highlight Orange Coast County, which is a Bay Area community college who is set to open some community college uh, affordable dorms um, in 2020 that are 6% below housing rate and are available to e made available to each student. And I feel as though we are in a similar community with the exact same need, so we could emulate and do something similar by building the same housing. All right. Are y'all ready to get out there and march? Yes! Okay. My name is Michelle Morris, and I'm a proud local IFPTE Local 21 member. I'm one of your city planners here today, and I'm here to let you know that city workers stand with you in the fight for affordable housing. City workers are on the front lines with you, making sure that tenants are protected, holding developers accountable, yeah. fighting to ensure the community is informed and included. But we're struggling to provide these, these services to you because we have a staffing crisis. We have 600 vacancies at the city of Oakland, one in three Vacancies in the Housing and Community Development Department, which means affordable housing is that much harder to get through the pipeline for people like Moms for Oakland, for all families in Oakland who deserve affordable housing. So I'm here to let you know that without enough city workers, Oakland struggles without criti critical services, without financial resources to build enough affordable housing. Despite this overworked and underpaid, city workers remain dedicated to the city of Oakland. We remain dedicated as city workers to get housing for everyone. Make no mistake, city workers stand with you to fight this affordable housing crisis. Thank you. Greetings and good day to everyone. I am Reverend Jeremy McCants, representing the Black Housing Union, as well as a member of ACE, and as a, as a member of, and associate minister at Allen Temple Baptist Church in East Oakland. So I'm here to spread love and light and encouragement as Allen Temple stands in solidarity with you all. Um, as a man of Christian faith and understanding that interfaith um, relationships are important to the work that we do, um, our the text I want to use today is 1 John 4.20, which asks us the question, how can we love a God who we do not see, yet hate our brothers and sisters who we see every day? And we understand that love is not a passive thing. Love is not ethereal. It does not live above us. That love is an act of resistance. That love is action. Love is concrete. And you all being here today is a sign of that love, that love that God lives through each and every one of us. For we even know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was denied housing when he was brought into this world. But God, through Jesus Christ, went on to live a life of resistance and resilience, resiliency. And we are standing as living uh, testaments to that. That as we stand in solidarity, that we know, uh, we know the statistics, we know the numbers, right? We know that rent, I'm gonna put down my preacher hat and say that rent is too damn high. So we know the numbers and we understand and we wanna tell the power to tell legislation that we are not numbers on a page, that we are not statistics, that we are families made up of the poor, we are families made up of, of the widow, the orphan, and um, the disinherited. That we are families that are being ripped apart by those who are denying us housing, denying us uh, the beauty of life. So we are standing here in resistance to that. And I'm so grateful to be here and that knowing that we are not, uh, knowing that you are not alone in this fight is, is something that you should carry with you every step of the way. So housing is a right. Housing is a right. Housing is a right. 
God bless you all. How you doing, Oakland? My name is Keith Brown. I'm a teacher at Bret Hart Middle School in Oakland, and I'm also president of the Oakland Education Association. We are here because we demand housing for our babies. We demand housing for our mamas here in Oakland. We demand housing for our family and community. The teachers and educators of Oakland went on strike nine months ago and, brought, and we brought awareness around the teacher retention crisis in this city. We're here in the richest state in the nation and we have one of the highest costs of living. Most educators cannot afford to live in this city. And Oakland is a part of a growing Red for Ed movement, a teacher strike wave in this nation that has brought community demands such as affordable housing for our students and families. And we are here because our students today need help. We are marching today because today we have developers producing, overproducing luxury housing and keeping it vacant, shutting it out from our families who need housing. So it is a shame and it doesn't make sense that we live in a city where we have leaders trying to close our schools and keep families away from housing that is there. And we are here to say no to that. So, some information to share with everyone that in the 2016-17 school year, the Oakland Unified School District saw an increase of more than 50% homeless students. This is a shame and it needs to stop because we know that if our students can't go to a home where it's safe and warm, that they will not be able to succeed in the classroom. So we are here, the educators of Oakland stand with the families in Oakland to demand affordable housing, no? Affordable housing right now. And we're, together we are saying that the rent is too damn high in Oakland and it's time to stop that. Growing up here, that 
are part of our community. We need to take Oakland back and raise our fist for affordable housing. I say affordable housing is a human right. I say affordable housing is a human right. I say affordable housing is a human right. And I say where are the impact Please. Where are the impact Please. We need action now. We will take action as much as we can to house our unhousing and maintain those who are here in our city of Oakland. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, I'm Yvonne Williams, the president business agent of the Amalgamated Transit Union Local 192. We're the AC Transit bus drivers. And we've been in this community uh, for 118 years serving Oakland and the surrounding communities. What I need to tell you today, and I'm sure you already know, how many homeless brothers and sisters ride our buses from sunup to sundown all night long because they have nowhere else to go. I've been driving buses for probably 35 years in the city of Oakland, and I can tell you how many times children as young as five and six years old have been out on the streets at night, especially during the crack cocaine crisis that devastated our communities. We know what it is. I know personally what it is to be homeless. Yes, I've been homeless. I've slept in my truck. I've slept in my car. And I can tell you it is no fun. But guess what? I had a place to sleep because I had a car to sleep in. So I know what it's like in every single day. We need to grow stronger and stronger and, add, and last one day longer and get stronger and stronger until this crisis has been eliminated of homelessness. It started with urban renewal in San Francisco almost 50 years ago. If you were around then, then you know what happened. Gentrification uh, went through the, through the community in the Fillmore, wiped out the whole community. And now today, you can hardly find any original residents of San Francisco from 50 years ago, and now it's happening in Oakland. And next it's going to happen in, in all, the, all the surrounding communities. This is a fight worth having. You guys need to get in the fight, which you are, and you need to stay in the fight and bring some other people to the fight with you. Isn't that right, Liz? Right. All right, thank you. Hello, my name is Nick. I'm a volunteer for People's Breakfast Oakland and a member of ACE's anti-displacement chapter. I've been an Oakland resident for the last 15 years and I've been an educator and youth developer for those same 15 years here in the Bay Area. My partner is also an educator in the Oakland Unified School District where she's been teaching for the last 11 years. We've seen a lot of things change in Oakland and some of those, some of those changes have become too common. It's become all too often that we've come home and share stories with each other about the trauma inflicted upon our students as their families try to try their best to navigate this crisis of greed. Stories of children commuting sometimes as much as five hours each day, first from places like Vallejo, San Leandro, and Antioch, but now from as far away as places like Stockton. Stories of students bouncing around from couch to couch and house to house, not knowing where they're going to sleep each night. Stories of students facing eviction and displacement. Stories of students living on the streets like the other children who make up 25% of Oakland's unhoused population. These are children, and yet we are giving them the impossible task of coming to school on time, well rested, and prepared to empower themselves and their communities despite this. All becomes because politicians in Oakland like Libby Schaff have forgotten them. Like for them, this trauma is further impacted for many of us by seeing all these cranes pollute our skylines with housing not meant for us. Housing meant for the rich and to attract new wealthy residents. All while Oakland politicians tell the poor people, the working class people, and the people of color of Oakland to wait our turn, despite there being four vacant units for every houseless person in Oakland right now. I look out at this crowd and I see people who are tired of waiting. People like the Moms for, ho for Housing, 
who are taking action into their own hands. We are tired of waiting for we are tired of waiting for housing to trickle down to us while capitalist developers profit off of our city. We are tired of Oakland politicians like Libby Schaff abusing the power of their office, disempowering our children and our communities for their own political gain. The time is now for us to show them what true power looks like. And that's why we're all here today. Because we know that true power lies with the people. True power lies in our love and our commitment for one another and standing shoulder to shoulder in our combined struggle of creating an Oakland for all of us, not just some of us. If you're here today as a member of an organization, thank you. If you're here today on your own, thank you. And I encourage you to talk to someone from an organization and join us because we need you to help us grow our collective power, our true power. A power that belongs to all of us, because Oakland belongs to all of us. We demand housing for all of us now. We demand justice for all of us now. Because we are Oakland, and our time is now. Thank you. Del doble de renta. 
I was one of the had affected with this rent increase. Estoy aquí para apoyar a mi comunidad. We are, I am here. Toda esta, ellos están pasando por lo mismo. I am here with all my community. Quiero and I want a quiero hablar por ellos porque sé to lo talk difícil que es and how difficult situación. is this situation. Estoy viendo tantas, tantas construcciones de edificios. I've been seeing so many constructions of buildings. Y no es posible. It is not possible. Que estén pidiendo tanto de renta. That they want so much for rent. Habiendo tantas personas sin hogar. Even though so many of of the people they don't have no money to pay to, to afford those rents. No es posible que solo un estudio esté costando dos mil trescientos dólares. It is not possible that one studio it's two thousand and three hundred dollars. Sabemos que trabajamos duro. We know that we work hard. Algunas personas trabajan hasta doble. Some people have two jobs. Nosotros queremos what we want rentas justas para que nuestros hijos so en that our children in a future tengan un estudio porque se imaginan que have a house. este incremento de renta que está pasando nuestros hijos no van a poder estudiar if we don't do something now our children will not going to be able to have a housing in the future or even go to college estoy aquí por eso para hablar that's para why I'm here and with my community escuchen. Para que so they can hear us. So this March, voz por una vivienda justa. we want fair housing. Queremos viviendas justas. We want fair housing. Queremos viviendas justas. We want fair housing. No queremos más gente que está viviendo en la calle. No more homeless. No queremos eso. We don't want that. Queremos que Oakland. We want that Oakland esté limpio. It's clean. Que esté fuerte. That it, it can be strong. Que nosotros como comunidad que somos, that us like community, juntos. we fight together. Porque la unión hace la fuerza. Because the unity makes the difference. Si sí se puede. Si sí se puede. Thank you, everyone. So, folks, I just wanted to make a quick announcement because I do not want you all to get restless and walk away because we need your legs to march with us to our destination. We have a very, like I said earlier, we have a very strategic location that we're going to that highlights some of the issues that we're talking about today. So we want you to stick with us. And I want to make clear, there's some speakers who I have not seen near us. I see Walter Riley was here. I don't see where he is right now. Walter Riley, Reverend Ken Chambers. If you can make your way to the end of the truck. Um, so the next course that we're going to do, we're going to have a section that's just for young people, right? I said the young people will lead us. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish with our community group speakers from here. We have the Poor People's Campaign. Right now we have one more speaker from our organization, from ACE, and then we're going to go midway to our ending location, and that's where we're going to have a moment to hear all of our young people. We have several organizations here, Youth, for, uh, youth versus the Apocalypse, we have Youth for Positive Action here from Hayward, and so we're going to listen to them for a couple uh, minutes, and then we're going to get to our destination. Is that okay? Y'all will hang with us till then? I hope you enjoy the coverage. And we'll be back again in the next uh, tomorrow. Take care.